here we are to talk about nothing other than the budget receiver I bought. Um, and I don't understand what, what, what qualifies people to think something's a budget receiver. Well, it simply comes down to what kind of chips it has inside that runs everything. Like what kind of audio it can pass through. Um, what kind of refresh rates. Like, um, believe it or not, um, receivers are more than just sound machines now. They're actually, they pass um, video through them. Like, that's the whole point now. So when I plug my HDMI into the receiver, I only have to plug one HDMI into the television. It saves a lot. Um, I believe my, it said, mine said six in one or whatever. I can have six inputs in mine compared to the, the um, was it, I think I already had four on my TV. So it wasn't like, I could live with four, but I have six. I'm, right now, let's just put it this way. Right now, I'm running one input and that's it on my television. Actually, no, then I have a, whatever, forget that, forget everything I just said, all nonsense. I'm running a, a, a few of them on my television, and I'm running only one, or no, two on the receiver. And for the first time ever, I was able to test out Disney, not Disney, keep calling it Disney. I was able to test out Dolby Digital Plus as an audio format when I played that really, really bad stream of The Dark Knight from H uh, HBO Max and 1080p. I couldn't believe how bad it looked. And if it looks that bad, can you imagine what it would look like in 4K? I, I bet you they offer in 4K, but cell phone will never, cell phone package will never give it to you in 4K for free. If you, if you sign up for AT&T or whatever, whatever company you have, they're never gonna give you the full package. They're gonna give you the half-ass one that doesn't include anything. And that's what I got. So, you know, I feel as if, first of all, how much does people need in a receiver? Like, like I also read online, if someone said you need like 7, 7.2 or 7.1 in order to get Atmos to really the whole point of it. If that's true, that means that probably over 90% of the people that own movies and stuff don't have Dolby Atmos. Because I can guarantee most people don't have 7.1 receivers and stuff like that. So it, it kind of makes me laugh too that a lot a lot of movies nowadays are coded with Atmos. They give you a whole track of it. And then what's the point? If most people can't play, at, play the Atmos track, what's the point putting it on all the discs? Maybe you should just sell discs with Atmos and discs with just Tro Dolby True HD or whatever, or DTS HD, and whatever the, was it the, the DTS um, big time format is DTSX or whatever it is, but it's not on as many discs as um, Dolby Atmos. Uh, I think this is really that that's really hurting people. I think that so for my receiver, I didn't need it. My receiver, I all I needed was. You know, um, let's let's put it this way: Dolby Digital Plus and uh, not Do Do Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby True HD and um, DTS HD. That's all I need. I don't need anything more than that. And I can. It gets very loud. It's very you know, very good with the subwoofers. It does everything so great. Um, I don't understand these other people. They're the very small percentage of people, the ones that are getting all this Atmos equipment. You can show it off all you want on the internet. The typical person will never be able to use it. I, I, I see any kind of equipment. People drilling stuff into the walls. Um, people that have, yeah, they have those ceiling speakers. And I say, I just laugh my ass off because I'm saying to myself, do, how much time do these people have to actually watch the movies when they put all this equipment up? If they're not home during the day and half the nights they're out with friends or something or going to a football game or whatever they're doing with their lives, do they actually have enough time to spend in front of these Atmos systems? It might look like I just, you know, hang around and watch movies all day, but I don't. So I want to know what these people do when they spend like $5,000 or more on a system. I don't understand how you can justify spending that kind of money. I think it's completely foolish. Very, very foolish of people. Um, I'm just, and what else can I say? Um, I, to call a $500 receiver a budget receiver, 
for most people, they would not call it that. Because $500 is the price of a television for most people. But the reason why they call it budget is because in the audio video field, with these people spending all that countless amount of money, like I just said, it's a budget one to them. Um, and people are going to, um, pe people will ask me at most question because the receiver I have doesn't include that. And I don't need it. I don't want it, to tell you the truth. I, I couldn't put Atmos in my house if I wanted to. It's too late at night. If I add any kind of more sound, more sounds into the house, it will make things that much louder and annoying for people, and I won't be able to listen to it. Um, what other thing? What other thing is there to say? Um, I also have connections to um, for the optical and the digital audio. Although I did test out the the laser disc player. I still have to test out the, um, I never tested out the TV optical, which I'm never going to use very rarely. Once in a while I'll use it, um, this is uh, connected to another TV. I, I'll use it to listen to over-the-air television. I don't like to watch TV on my other TV because of static images. I know it's probably all just in my head, but I don't want to take the chance of no static images like scoreboards and stuff in my um, new TV. Just on the old one that's on the bottom. That's on the Samsung 1080. And um, I haven't tested that optical cable yet. But all I know is I can't play really, really high-end high, high end, um, video through the optical. Because that caused a problem in the other machine. The optical probably couldn't handle the data going through it. And you know what? It probably wasn't even the um, receiver that was the problem now that I think about it. It's just the fact that it didn't have any HDMI ports. So I couldn't get the data to go through fast enough. That's probably what the problem was. I, I love the new receiver though. After I could went through four uh, over four hours of um, trying to figure out a problem, come to find it out I crossed the wires for the center speaker. That's one thing. I don't know much about speakers at all, but what I did find out that was kind of weird was, all right, I crossed the speaker. When you turn it on five to 25 seconds later, it turns itself off. Protection mode. Well. If it's the wrong way and it's not crossed correctly, how do I still get audio out of it that sounds exactly the same as if it was hooked up the correct way? I don't understand that. But whatever it was, I hooked it up wrong, and I know how to accept my own faults and admit it. So good luck, everybody, um, with your own setups. I think that you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised what you can get by the 5.1 receiver I got. It's only about a $500 receiver. It may seem extremely expensive, but it's not compared to the other ones. Um, and you can get, and you know what? I, I don't have, I didn't buy any speakers for it. All the speakers were all, already in my house when it got here. So I didn't have to buy anything extra. All I needed was the, the receiver. I have two from, yeah, left and right speakers. No, not two, my mistake. I have one. So one left speaker left yeah one left speaker and one right speaker and i wanted to tell you a little about this so you can um you can understand it a little more these speakers are over 25 years old and they still work very well more than good enough i have a center speaker that's probably i don't know how old the center speaker is i think i definitely think it's about 15 years old at least and my rear speakers are 20 three years old at least no maybe like 20 years old every all my speakers are really old but they play very well and um i guess what at most from what i read you can pretty much use any speaker but that's irrelevant why did i say that what i'm trying to tell people is is that the, you don't have to use the most expensive setup on the planet all you have to do is something that's good enough that sounds good and I have speakers that are very old and they work fine you do not need to go buy clip speakers unless the only time I recommend you do that is if you buy a really expensive receiver like we have down here um, because if you buy some clip speakers and all those great pieces of equipment um, you're not gonna buy a, a uh, let's say you buy a $1,500 receiver you're not gonna b connect like $50 speakers to it. That would be idiotic. You'd probably blow them out too. Um, I, in my overall experience, I know that if you 
if you try to put too much power through a speaker, that's the end of it. And I, I, I never, personally, believe it or not, I've never blown a speaker before. It's because I don't turn things up to the extreme limits like other people do. I'm not that kind of person when it comes to audio. Because I don't want to ruin my stuff and take risks like that. I have enough problems with, with learning how to do things. Do you think I want to blow things out again? Alright, bye-bye.